Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Fran, I'm from Venezuela. And today we're gonna to be reacting to a video called um, Why Starbucks Failed in Australia. Um, I I don't know why, I, I just assumed that Starbucks is all over the world. <laughs> so um, I'm curious to see like why does nobody like drink Starbucks um, in Australia? Do they just don't like coffee? <laughs> um, I don't know. So let's check it out and don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. So let's hit play. Starbucks has coffee shops all over the world. There are more than 28,000 locations in 76 markets. From Shanghai to Yeah, Guantanamo they're all Bay. over the world. And in China, a new Starbucks location opens up every 15 hours. Oh my hours. god, 15 hours? But there's one continent that seems Hold on, that, that just seems insane. Why would anyone, like, why would any country need a coffee shop? Like, what? Every 15 hours? That's just like, how many, how many are they? I don't think we need, I mean, I love coffee, of course, as does everyone else, but, um, you know, like, I think that's a little bit excessive. Nobody needs that many coffee shops. Seattle-based coffee chain. And that continent is Australia. It's proven to be one oh, of okay. the Oh, it's because the it's a tough market. To. Maybe there's so a lot of competition. That Starbucks closed more than two thirds of its stores oh, on the wow. continent back in 2008. So what went so wrong with Starbucks in Australia? To answer that, let's go back to July of 2000, when Starbucks opened its first Australian shop in Sydney. That was From so there, long it ago. Expanded fast. By 2008, Starbucks had 87 stores across the continent. See, but that's that's the thing. I think actually 87 shops, like for the whole continent i think that's actually little <laughs> i don't know if it's just like my mind doing math wrong but i think that's actually there's there's few starbucks or there were few starbucks shops compared to like other places in the world i think that's actually little oh i know that that guy reminds me of um do you guys remember that video um, that went viral a few years ago um, of that guy who was um, doing like a, a conference, um, like a video call or something for work for, I think it was CNN and he was doing an interview and um, his little toddler, the little baby like came over <laughs> and entered the room and you can see it in the background, you know, the little baby that came and then like the mother or I don't know, the nanny or someone like opened the door really fast and grabbed the little toddler because it was a live interview. That that guy, I don't think he's, he's that guy, but he definitely reminds me of, of, of that a guy that went viral. Country, is that they thought that their business model could just roll out uh, to a different environment and there was no need for them to adjust. But that was mm, the problem. Okay. They tried to grow the empire too fast. Yeah, so I think you have to, yeah, because, locations yeah, I think slowly. you have to, like, give it time. And as, I think that's, like, I don't know, business 101, right? I think you have to give it time for, you know, for, for people to, like, actually like and taste it and try it and be like, oh, yeah, you know, we like this. Um, and for those things to happen, like, you just need time, sadly. It doesn't happen overnight. You have to really give it some time for people to actually like like the product consume it and you know because after a while it becomes the norm so people are like oh i i think it's become routine like i need it it's a part of my life integrating them into the yeah it has market. to be integrated when they launched they launched too rapidly mm. and didn't give the australian consumer an opportunity to really develop an of appetite course. for the starbucks yeah. brand they also moved into regional areas into um outer suburbs of major cities and so for the Australian consumer, it was almost like it was too available mm. for them. And so there wasn't this point of difference, this want. This yeah, because it's like if the, if it's all over the, the if it's all over town, like you can just like grab in anything. Seven years in Australia, Starbucks accumulated $105 million in losses. By 2007, Starbucks Australia I have to say, like, I don't know, like, well, yeah, I, for a big US, company, I don't think that's a lot, but dollars. probably it is, right? <laughs> Starbucks announced it was shutting Oh my god, that's a lot. Stores. That's like over half. But of course, Almost 2008 half. was a difficult time for businesses due to the, oh, financial, the financial crisis. crisis, yeah. Along with the Australia closures, Starbucks also closed 600 underperforming American stores. But even still, such a retreat Okay, uh, I think like looking at this, I think it's a problem like uh, do people like consume less Starbucks these days? I mean, it's been like rapidly declining um for a while now, for a while now. If if this is to I don't know, that's what I'm like getting at. Because if even in the US they closed some shops um a few years ago, I can only imagine that they're closing down. I don't think they're opening like new stores, for example, in the US, you know, the the original place where 
they created this 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 chain so i think it's probably been like rapidly declining i don't think it starbucks is what it used to be for earlier was embarrassing for the brand oh my god that's that's harsh um for the australian uh, consumer when they when they did leave the market um or at least a large number of their stores were shut down they didn't really care yeah. It's partly because Australians are spoiled for choice when it comes to coffee. Yeah. Australia's coffee market is yeah. one of the biggest Yeah, I think, yeah, because they drink the a lot of coffee. So I'm guessing they have a lot of choices um, when it comes to coffee. So, like, why is Starbucks different? Like, you have to give them something extra. Otherwise, consumers are just going to be like, we can get, like, coffee in so many other places and probably what they consider is better coffee. So, like, why would I? They have so many choices expected to hit more than six billion dollars in total yeah revenue. because it's a big industry i think they drink they really do drink a lot of coffee culture since the mid-1900s when italian and greek immigrants began mm, traveling italian country, coffee great the immigrants introduced australians to espresso espresso by the a 1980s, beautiful cup of espresso fully engulfed in cafe culture they've also grown accustomed to specialty menu items like a flat white or an australian oh, macchiato what an australian macchiato i want to try that what 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 a macchiato i think it's just um like a splash of milk i think like um espresso with just like a little splash of milk um but what why is why is it different like an australian macchiato i want to try that i want to know what it is actually cafes in australia were born out of like the italian culture of um you know meeting a friend and knowing your local barista oh it's very yeah it's very like um like community like a community thing like you just go to your local coffee shop and maybe you go there like every morning so you know like your barista that makes your coffee and it he does it like or she does it how you like it because they know you so you're like hey hi i want my usual or maybe you just um are in the habit of like every time like you i don't know you go to the gym and then you like meet a friend for a coffee and you do that in like your local coffee place and everyone you know like knows you or maybe you just want to try a lot of um artisanal coffee shops and then starbucks came in with what is more of an american style like mm. coffee culture which is essentially just like coffee is a product coffee is a commodity coffee is like like perk me up in the morning it's caffeination starbucks had a basic menu and offered more sugar yeah drinks. because i think there's also i think we all know like um united states it's like a very um it's very like obviously capitalism but obviously everything is a product i think there's just um the sense that all like american fabric fabricated manufactured products are just that you know they're products they're um it's not just something that as they said, you know, it's, like, it's not like your local coffee shop that, you know, you know the barista and they're going to be like, oh, this this is an espresso. And, you know, you probably know where your coffee beans are from. And, you know, this is, um, I don't know, like Italian beans and they're dark roasted or they're medium roasted. And it's it's probably more of an art form compared to something like Starbucks, where it's just like a fixed menu. And even though you can obviously like do like oh a shot of like um evaporated milk and two shots of um i don't know espresso or whatever but it's more of a fixed menu and obviously something that you know like everything everyone has access to it um but a local coffee shop obviously is going to have like different things they're going to have different types of coffee and you're going to know the, the the person that's making your coffee where whereas the starbucks is just like they have like um uh I, I don't know if they do but i'm guessing well no i'm i'm pretty sure they do they they train you so you you just they just like know and they're just like um they have a set of instructions and they're going to be like oh you want this okay so like here are the instructions i'm just going to do it and that's it compared to something that you know it's more local and people are just going to be like oh maybe i have something that you want to try and maybe like the barista comes up with something um, on 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 his on his own and 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 so obviously very Australians different. Didn't like. Yeah, and the whole sugary there. thing, of yeah. course, because a lot of I think Starbucks is it's a lot of, you know, it's coffee, yes, of course, but it's very um, I don't know, like you you don't really go to Starbucks for a macchiato, for instance, or for an ex espresso. You go there for actual drinks, like um. I don't know, like a tall Americano with um, like whipped cream and a frappuccino or st a stuff, a stuff like that. This more of a drink and not just um, like a coffee, like something I, I need to pick me up at 4, 4 p.m. 
Um, and it's more like it has tons of sugar, it has tons of cream, it has tons of things that maybe you're just, you're not always in the mood for that. I think it's, I think a lot of people all over the world and probably outside of the US, we see it more of a, like a treat um, and not, you know, like something I am drinking every day because if you're a coffee drinker, you're probably drinking, you like, you know, you, you know what you like and maybe you have like a flat white or um, a macchiato or black coffee but you do it you know what you like and you know like it's routine so maybe like you know I I go for like black coffee in the morning and then in the afternoon I may have maybe um, a cold brew or I may have um, an espresso with like two shots of almond milk but at Starbucks it's more of a oh you have a caramel latte with whatever 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 and it's more like this is also this is this is practically like a milkshake with coffee and I, I don't think that um, people outside of the U.S. are more, you know, are into that culture. Because especially if you like coffee, like, you actually like the taste of coffee. You don't want to, like, disguise that with, like, tons of sugar and different other things. We don't really want a coffee that's, uh, you know, hundreds of ounces with lots of sugar in it. We want something a bit more sophisticated. Yeah, for that's more sophisticated. It's just, you know, things. coffee. So Australians instead opted to pay less for coffee they liked from a local barista they trusted. See, that's the thing. You go to people that you trust. We're going to open all these cafes and, and they're all going to be to-go focused. It just was the complete wrong market for what... Mm. what I think that's the thing. It was just a wrong market. But there's one American coffee company that's thriving in Australia. Okay, so what is it? Founded in Chicago and now based in Australia. Oh my god, they Gene's moved. <laughs> Completely Australia moved. Starbucks couldn't. Oh, your jeans. I hadn't Gloria heard of Gene's that. Has more than 400 Australian oh wow, locations. that's a lot. And serves more than 35 million consumers in Australia each year. So what is Gloria Jeans doing in Australia that Starbucks isn't? Well, the company attributes its success to two Australians who franchised the business in their home country. Shops started to show up in Australia in 1996. Well, they are, so they, they have a today, lot of years in there. Every Australian state. The reason? Its menu. The chain offers a wide variety of espresso drinks and specialty coffee. Mm. Failing to adapt its menu to Australians' coffee culture proved to be a mistake for Starbucks. Yeah, that's what we were getting at. Of course, you have to, like, first do, like, a market research and see, like, what are people actually drinking when it comes to coffee here. So if they're not having, like, their caramel, chocolate, macchiato, double espresso, whatever, whatever, they just want probably, like, a blend of, I don't know, African coffees. Um... And you know what they're you're, what you're drinking. You know, I think that's very important for people that actually like coffee. Um, you want to know what you're drinking. You want to know what where your coffee is coming from. Company faces another challenge later this year, Italy. Starbucks is opening its first store in yeah, Milan you in think, 2018. I, I, Home of the espresso, Italy is rich. Yeah, I don't know if Starbucks, Starbucks is popular. Starbucks, it's going to be very popular in Italy. That it did in Australia. The company said that it would develop in Italy with humility. Humility. I think that's course. a good, it good approach. It announced it opening a roastery, which is not your average cafe. It gives customers a chance to see coffee beans roasted and processed before their eyes. So there's a chance that it won't struggle like it did in Australia. Maybe, but... I don't know because, you know, like Italy has so many coffee shops and so many, like there's good coffee everywhere. I don't know if a Starbucks is going to be successful there. I think it's going to suffer the same fate. Back on the continent. In 2014, Starbucks locations in Australia were purchased by the Mount Waverly based Withers Group. Starbucks told CNBC that since its sale to the Withers Group, the company learned a lot. So this time, it's taken a different approach to putting Starbucks okay. on the continent. So if you just think about it, Australia is a big tourism destination. There's a lot of US. And, um, <laughs> so basically it's for tourists. It's been very successful in China um, and it makes a lot of sense for them to build okay. out. Okay, but I think that's a better approach actually. Familiar to them. Now with 39 locations in Brisbane, Melbourne, the Gold Coast and Sydney areas, this time it's not looking to appeal to Australians. Yeah. But instead, the coffee giant hopes to be a familiar face for tourists visiting popular yeah. vacation destinations. People that just want their Starbucks because they're foreigners that are used to it. Uh, the same thing in terms of international students at our Of course, international students, uh, yeah. Opportunities for them. And we're starting to see um, Starbucks enter into some large shopping malls. Uh, here in Australia as well. Australia welcomed 9 million tourists from 2017. Yeah, obviously, like, it's a huge market. Australia is a lot of, obviously, a lot of tourists go there. Alone. So tourists could possibly be the key to keeping the company afloat and preventing another downfall. Um, yeah, I think, I think, um, it was, yeah. 
Um, I think it's definitely like it doesn't surprise me because at first I was like, wait, that's weird. You know, Australians really like coffee, so like, why would they fail? But you know, if you like really do think about it, it's like, no, yeah, they they really do have a point. I think the fact that um, I, I think it all boils down to the whole like when you look when you think of Starbucks, you think of like super processed, over processed um, drinks. You don't really think of coffee. At least I know that a lot of people do. Like they don't really see it as coffee. They see it as something that's like very sugary, very over processed. Um, it's not actual coffee. So if you're a culture that actually does like worry about having you know actual coffee and drinking coffee i can see why it would fail you know they're sugary drinks they're it's not actual coffee <laughs> you know it's not what i want to drink um in the morning um but really i do hope they they somehow are able to to pick it up and it, i think there's a market for tourists for sure but not for you know people that actually like they live there and for australians um that was really interesting and um i'll see you next time bye